Across the umbral plains, one stands before them. He was the one Hell feared most. When many of his own had fallen, he burdened himself with the role of mankind's savior, forever trapped in a cycle of torment and bloodshed. No matter how long he fought, no matter how many he had conquered, the demons allowed him no rest. For decades, the songs of hell would be made of the screams and pain from those he had slain, and those that tasted the bite of his sword named him the Doom Slayer. <coughs> oh. Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> Greetings, ladies and gentlemen of the internet. My name is Ty with Mojo Plays, and today we're taking a look at the origin of the Doom Slayer. Before we begin, we publish new videos all week long, so be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. And hey, I love Doom, you love Doom, we all love Doom. So why not give me a follow on Twitter, at GhostwriterTyler, and tell me which Doom demon is your favorite. Mine's the Caco Demon, and the Pain Elemental, and the Cyber Demon. Hell, I love them all. Anyways, let's get to it. Hard to believe the Slayer has been around for nearly 30 years. Doom has seen a wealth of success ever since its debut in 1993, and whether it was in pseudo 3D environments or boasting the power of its engines, Doom resonates with many for its frenetic gameplay, creepy atmosphere, and occasional ridiculousness. However, it wouldn't be Doom without our beloved Doom Guy. Er, Doom Marine. Doom Slayer? Yeah, these names and backstories seem a little scattered, but there is a cohesive storyline for our rampaging soldier. Allow us to bring you up to speed between 1993's Doom and the 2016 Doom. Surprisingly, our hero, known at this point as the Marine, held somewhat humble beginnings, being a Marine who was discharged on account of refusing to follow orders. Like I said, humble beginnings. As punishment, he was demoted and transferred to a UAC base on Mars, and sometime after is when the demons invaded, forcing the Marine to fight his way through Phobos, Deimos, and eventually, Hell itself. When the carnage was over, he returned home to his loving wife, child, and adorable bunny Daisy. Well, that would have been the end for the Marine, had this story gone for a happy ending. Upon his return, the Marine found his family had been slain by the demons during their invasion of Earth. Consumed by rage, the Marine would once again take on the forces of Hell, laying waste to every imp, archvile, and titan that stood in his path. Even after he had defeated the Icon of Sin, the torment was not yet over. <laughs> Yet again, the UAC would find itself under attack by Hell's army. However, this onslaught was not led by the Spider Mastermind, nor the Icon of Sin. This time, it was a being known only as the Mother of All Demons. A powerful creature no one dared to challenge, except for the Marine. With endless fury and bullets, the Marine vanquished the Mother of All Demons and would incite revenge within her sister, the Resurrector. Sadly, even the defeat of the Resurrector would not bring an end to the Marine's nightmare. <laughs> Defeating the Resurrector only caused the Marine to be teleported to a mysterious world, the one known as Argent Dinner. His mind torn by rage and insanity, the Marine would wander this ancient land until he was captured by a human-like species known as the Argenta and taken to the Sentinel Prime. Despite the condition of his corrupted psyche, the Sentinel would witness his combat prowess in their city's battle arena. His performance would attract the attention of a faction of warriors known as the Night Sentinels, led by King Novik. The Marine was quickly recruited into their army, and they trained him to, more or less, control his rage and vengeance. A small invasion from Hell would display the Marine's progress, causing him to be noticed by King Novik himself, and so, 
the Marine became an official member of the Night Sentinels. Hear me, Slayer. When his heart is laid to rest, then his soul will be at peace. And so will mine. Of course, Novik was not the only one to become aware of the Marine's potential. Hale also saw this, and immediately recognized the Marine as a threat to their conquest. This was a problem that needed to be dealt with quickly. Without hesitation, they planned and launched a monstrous assault upon the city of Terrace Nabod. One being knew the Marine would not survive this attack, even with his already exceptional abilities. The Maker known as Seraphim would approach the Marine and bestow an incredible boost in speed and power on him. And now, they will fear you. With this power and an ancient weapon known as the Crucible, the Marine was able to assist the Night Sentinels in bringing down a massive cluster of Hell's army, including the monstrous Dreadnought Titan. It was this battle that would cause him to forever be known as the Doom Slayer. Come, brother! Let Hell tremble before our might! One by one, the demons fell. Fight after fight, their numbers ever diminishing. Not even the mighty Titans could withstand the smite of the Slayer. It seemed as though Hell would be wiped out of the universe. Many would rejoice upon hearing these victories, but alas, a third faction sought to turn the tide of the war. As the Sentinels succeeded in every battle against Hell, Seraphim's people, the Makers, were plotting to give Hell the advantage once again. Hurry, retrieve your father's soul sphere. He will save Erdak from the demons. For the human's sake, do it now. Being a race boasting extensive lifespans, high intellect, and supernatural abilities, the Makers wield a great amount of power to affect life outside their realm. However, after their entity known as the Father had abandoned them, the Makers realized the crisis they were in. When a Maker reaches the end of their life, they begin to suffer severe mental and physical degradation. With the Father, they are able to meet their end on their own terms and go through the process of resurrection. But with the Father gone, the Makers were forced to find another alternative, one that involved absorbing the souls of other life forms and energy for their own benefit. The culling allows your people to replenish their resources and survive. As you save your world, you put hers in peril. Hell knew of the Makers' dilemma, and would offer them a limitless supply of Argent energy should they assist them in their conquest. Desperate to save their civilization, the Makers betrayed the Sentinels and brought with them the Blood Priests. Together, the two newly allied factions would devise a plan to rid themselves of the Slayer. Though this plan would result in several casualties in Hell's army, it would allow the demons to close in on Argent Dinner and drive out the Sentinels. The Blood Priests would lure the Slayer to one of their temples, Cadinger's Sanctum, and demolish their own grounds, allowing them to trap and seal the Slayer inside a sarcophagus. It is here the Slayer would remain dormant, forever buried within the throat of Cadinger's Sanctum. Unbeknownst to anyone, one Maker refused to follow his brethren down the path of treachery. Seraphim would travel to Earth, disguised as a man named Samuel Hayden. It is under this identity he would become one of the smartest people on the planet, eventually leading UAC's efforts in solving Earth's energy crisis. With the UAC's resources, Hayden was able to discover Argent energy and introduce it to the humans. We'll set up a portal device at the tube. Use the light poles to mark our path! And during the first expedition on Mars, more specifically, Cadinger Sanctum, Hayden and his comrades would retrieve a number of relics, though at the expense of some UAC staff. Among those relics was the Slayer himself, still imprisoned, awaiting the day where he may rip and tear until it is done. Rip and tear until it is done. If you want to know the rest of the story, this is where the 2016 reboot begins. And my god, just reading this whole script makes me want to go back and play it once more. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, there's more where that came from.